Well, what is up everyone? My name is Umbro Garyu, and I'm back here with uh, another part of our tutorials. Uh, this time's gonna be a bit different. And uh, if you have seen this new uh, video I uploaded, then you have read, you should have read the description. And uh, do me a favor and just go ahead and read that. Um, I don't want to kind of explain everything. Uh, I can't basically uh, explain how um, I cannot make a tutorial every week, uh, at least a planned tutorial, because uh, it's gonna take too much time. And of course, I'm in university. Time is not something I have it in abundance so do my favor go ahead and read that um and what we're going to do basically is i'm going to be taking requests questions stuff like that from either my comments or from the private messages and uh you can go ahead and post comments or send me a private message and i'll read each one and i'll see uh if it's suitable for me to make a tutorial about that and of course for this one i found a comment on this video uh, named by this guy here and he's asking how to go about linking in a reload and I'm assuming that this guy is talking about uh, link constraints and not the actual linking. I call that parenting, just what I like to call it. Uh, I'm assuming he's talking about link constraints and how to use them in a reload animation. So let's go ahead and close Google Chrome here. So over here I have my uh, old Desert Eagle animation. Uh, it's not the best, but uh, it'll have to do for the example. I have um, some basic link constraining setup here. And uh, I think that's pretty much all you need. It's pretty much the same thing for all the reloads you're going to have. So let's go ahead and start talking about the uh, magazine. Uh, and then I'll go on with talking about the uh, wrist controller. And now I'm going to be talking about these two green things I have. Which, uh, they're, they're helpers. I'll explain them later. So the magazine. Right here, I'm under the, uh, of course, motion tab. And in here, I already have the link constraints set up. Of course, going into this tutorial, I'm assuming that you do know how to set up link constraints, how to use them, and you know how to pretty much use them in animation. And in here, for the magazine, I have three uh, setups, uh, three frames here, which I set up. At frame zero, the magazine is linked to frame gun, which is the body here. I'm just gonna give that the different colors so that you can see. Oh, my middle mouse button is not working. Why is that? There we go. There we go, I'm going to change that into a different color. Let me see. Compact. Let's give it a nice blue color. There we go. That is our gun. So of course, at frame 0, I have this linked to our nice gun here, nice and blue. And at frame 10, if I keep moving on, you'll notice that during this period, I do not have a keyframe laid down for the magazine, and it's linked to the weapon as if you were, if you were parent it to the gun. So, from zero to ten, as you can assume, it's linked to frame gun, as you would have linked it in these stuff with these stuff here. But at frame ten, something interesting happens. It gets linked to world as defined here. It gets linked to world from frame ten to thirty-seven. Uh, if you want to be specific, it actually goes from frame 11 to 37 because it doesn't include frame 10 here. But that's not important. So yes, uh, during this entire period from frame 10 to 37, it is linked to world, which means it has no parent and is uh, able to freely, freely move about. Let's see, if I was to move this here, you will see that this doesn't move with it. And if I was to go here and move it, you will see that it does. So at frame 37, let's go there. So this is just a bit, a couple frames before the um, actual magazine insert. And the reason I linked this magazine to the gun is because I want to kind of give effect that the person is aiming the magazine, kind of, you know, twitching around the magazine so that it will fit properly. And to make the effect more convincing, it, it will help if you were to link this directly to the gun at frame 37. Whoops, wrong thing. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What the hell did I do here? Oh, now this is something interesting I should talk about. Okay, this is going to be a bit hard to explain. Uh, Let's see. You'll see that if I was to uh, move the position frame here, you'll see the magazine kind of moves weird. And this is due to some uh, referencing stuff that you have with this linked to world here. Because if you realize... From frame 37 and before all the way to frame 10, this entire section here for the magazine is linked to world. 
And if we were to look at the keys for the gun, the gun here, I have the frames between frame 31 and 38 tweened for position, right? Now, if I was to move this, what I'm pretty much doing is I'm moving the weapon throughout this entire section here, where this is absolutely not linked at all to this thing here. So it's pretty complicated to explain, but if I were to put, let's say, a keyframe for the weapon right here, I mean right here, 37, and I was to drag it like so, it will work. But if I was to delete this keyframe, that means the weapon is going to be tweening the position keyframes all the way in this area. And if it was to move it again like this, it wouldn't be as, it, would, it wouldn't work pretty much. So let's move on with that. So from frame 37. And of course, just a bit early, as I talked about before, to uh, kind of give the effect of the uh, first guy aiming the magazine in there. And there goes our Megan and bang. There we go. Slide release. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the wrist here. So the wrist is pretty much uh, the identical way. I have a, a link to world at frame zero because, of course, it's moving freely about uh, from this beginning here. And at frame 19, it's going to be holding the magazine. And that's why I want it to be uh, linked to frame mag. And instead of actually animating, oh, my middle mouse is giving me a headache here. There we go. So at frame 19, this is linked to this here, here. And the reason is because I want to animate this and I want to save me some time and just let this be linked to that so it moves together. And that gives our effect of our mag draw, mag, draw, mag insert. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. It's pretty simple. And uh, you know, if you were to think logically, it would be make more sense if I was to uh, like the magazine let the uh, wrist link to world right after the uh, magazine insert. Like here, I said I linked it to world maybe. But um, it's not necessary to do that because the motion between uh, from me going from this position here to this position is relatively short. If I, if, however, if the weapon here, let's say, is rotating crazily. Let's do a quick example here. Let's say it rotates all the way to here. It's not going to look nice, but... So we'll take that and goes like this for some apparent reason. Then you'll see that the wrist follows that. And if I want the if I want the wrist to kind of go smoothly to that position, then I would kind of do a link to world right after that insert. So right here, I'll link that to world so that it will move smoothly by itself. Yeah, and you pretty much just key that and then link it back to the weapon at some point. Some point, let's say here. And then you will follow the gun back to the idle position. Now this is a good time to talk about the uh, little green things I have here. Whoops. The little green things I have here. And these are uh, pretty much my return to idle helpers. Uh, this thing right here is the exact position of the magazine at the idle position. And this thing here is the exact position of the wrist at the idle position. And what this does is it helps me to uh, kind of achieve that perfect spot on return to idle without playing around with all these values here. So after that magazine insert, it goes there and I want to return perfectly to the idle position. I just select the wrist controller. I use the align tool and I just click that. And of course our setup here, you want to align position and rotation to the pivot point, not the center, the pivot point. And that will pretty much give us a perfect position in idle. As you can see, the wrist is at the exact same position. No, that's just horrible. That is horrible. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. And um, I don't know what else to talk about, uh, except for uh, maybe a little tip on the mag draw. It's probably going to take a bit too long for this tutorial, but um, it's going to be about gimbal lock, especially when you have um, a setup like this. You want to do a kind of like a circular Call of Duty style mag draw. Then um, depending on how you link it, parent it using these tools here, uh, you might run into a gimbal lock. Uh, pretty much, uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if your animators have seen this before. You should have, is when you're trying to do, let's like, say, uh, return this magazine, let's say, from a position 1 to position 2, and it's not doing it smoothly. It's doing it kind of like jaggedly. And most likely is because you ran into a gimbal lock. Maybe I'll do that in a tutorial if you guys want me to do it. 
But um, of course, I'll be taking requests from you guys because, you know, you guys are watching tutorials, not me. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys will learn something from this and I hope you all have a great day.